It is the end of A Realm Reborn. Our long 50 hour journey has culminated into this moment where we must remove the threats of the Garlic Bread Empire and end the Ultima Weapon. There are perils, massive boss battles, and climactic finishes to end the initial Final Fantasy XIV quest. Will the stash survive? Will chat rage? Well, this is what happened. We pick up our final journey with the leaders of the Eorzean Alliance discussing their plans moving forward. The Black Wolf Daddy, Gaius, has already told them that they need to either surrender or die, or, or something to that fact. Mom Connie, Angry Wife Beater, and Giant Meryl Street are all discussing how they plan to surrender because it seems like that's all they can do. It's too dismal. Even the angriest guy in the room is preparing to throw in the towel. Er, a shirt. Even the happiest Sultana in the world is ready to say, hey, I don't want to get eaten like a Scooby Snack by the ultimate weapon. In Barge's Alfie, all high and mighty, they all address Sid, Benfilia, and Alfredo sauce. Everyone just kind of nods accepting,ly at me as like, oh yeah, it's that our friend. He's our neighborhood warrior of the light. Everyone just straight up listens to Alfie making the biggest big boy speech of never give up, never surrender. Thanks, Nicola, for this line. Chad also points out that Connie has an upside-down reversed unicorn necklace. Didn't notice that until now, but there it is. Connie makes a big statement of Gridania going to war. Sultana Nana just goes full on bonkers crazy with laughter. Like, what the hell in the demon spawn laugh is this? Good God, this scared the hell out of me, I'm not gonna lie. Chat reminds me that Lala Fells are at knee and groin height, and typically are exceedingly violent with sharp weapons. Well, Wife Beater and Merrill Webster Dictionary decide that it is time for them to join the fight against the garlic and gluten bread empire. They burn the surrender notes and talk about game plans. Then, Nana Sultana walks up and she like super catches me off guard because her big outfit makes her waddle the entire way up with the biggest steps. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that at all. We pray return to the waking sands because we of course we can't talk about things here. It's actually nice to see some of the scions actually populating the waking sands, which is, it's kind of cool since, uh, <laughs> We're recovering as we move forward. We talk about our game plan and we find out that Thancred is actually being controlled, a puppet, so to speak, by an evil Askian named Lala Bread. He has a gem on him that's uh, essentially controlling him. So there is, of course, hope that we can save our boy. They lay out a map of what we need to do and it's like really unfortunate that they didn't give any of the Lala Fells uppies because they, they needed it. They can't see over the table. Chad reminds me that they uh, uh, should only be presented with a uh, means of height elevation upon request. <clears throat> Don't address it, only respond to it. We talk about our plan to hit multiple Olive Gardens all at the same time for their garlic bread spoils in quick succession. Without hesitation, the stash nods. It's time to go. I know not of what was discussed but I'm ready for murder. We run off north to our first target, which is gonna take out one of the Darth Vader tribute band members, the big bad boy with the double shotgun shields, which is actually kind of hilarious. I don't know how that works. The recon soldier confirms that the target is there and it's time for us to attack. They give us a signal, which is really just like, hey, hey, caffeinated, can you go, go deal with that? Send the stash in for maximum carnage. <laughs> The soldiers will call us diversions and I go in for the kill. Boom, that's what we need to do. Chat clears the way for me and I enter the duty to fight this Arrhythmia who is an absolute beefquake of a dude if I have to say. Good God, look at the size of this guy. He's huge, look at those shields. This absolute unit sends his allies away to deal with me directly. Now this is a straight up warrior tank fight to the death. The first phase of the fight starts fairly slow. It's basically just don't stand in this area, dodge this attack and beat him down. Chad is talking this guy up, but I, I really don't see it. He casts some more ranged gun attacks, but they really weren't all that impressive. They attack in areas, but they are like incredibly well telegraphed. I had no issue dodging any of them. Well, he goes into a down phase and then some ads show up and it's like, oh, okay, I'm the warrior of light, what do you want? Well, this guy gets so angry that he screams himself into a full health bar. And then he gets some more nasty combos, like entire arena sized AOEs with more charging combos and other wild an animations. It was, it was pretty cool. 
Then he summons like some laser beans that detonate a few seconds later. Like this is starting to become pretty good. This is starting to become an incredible fight. He starts comboing the AOE reticles with all sorts of things that I have to dodge and uh, like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie. You have my attention. This is starting to be pretty good. Well, he goes down a second time and it looks like he's absolutely done and over with. Caffeinated tries to walk away, but then his stash sense is tingling and this guy muscles his way back up for a third time. Like, Holy hell, dude. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? He hog ties us and pulls us into a raging inferno that he created, and it's a DPS check. I have to kill him before he kills me. But this is, this is really intense. After a quick warrior on warrior violent night, we get him down, but it was like kind of tough towards the end. Then chat informs me that he used to be so much tough. La Habred shows up out of the cloud, the dark fart clouds that he has to taunt us. And all I can really see is Thancred being controlled by Hawk Moth. You can't get that, that. That's what I see. This is the adventures of Ladybug right here. We get a cutscene of the soldier informing Gaius that the angriest guy in the world has been killed. But honestly, I feel like they're just like, oh, shucks, they killed our friend. We skadoodle on to Camp Blue Frog for phase two of the Operation Archon, and we were told that we have to go in, inspire everyone in the camp for the fight ahead. Basically, I go up and offer them a cup of espresso, and, and they're like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. I then notice that all I do is just power stance over them to psych them up, like, like America, yeah, and they're all like, wow, I can't wait to fight. This, this was like so damn cheesy. <laughs> We meet up with Wife Beater outside the Castrum and we prepare a group. After a random roll to see who's going to join us, Galactic gets the pass, of course. Alex joins us for heals, and Mikey joins us as a Red Mage DPS. Here we go. Inside the dungeon, I start power pulling everything because I remember having Alex heal one time, and I, I trust Alex. I, I can be a bit more aggressive. We get to the Black Eft fight, which is like an evil Maggie, but. It, it like I start smashing everything in sight like the team we put together is doing great DPS the fight is pretty interesting because there's tons of ads being spawned everywhere we clear through most of the the cash drum and fill with robots and other various mobs and it's all good then we approach the Magitech Vanguard F1 who has arena sized AoEs with tank busters and it's uh, okay, pretty interesting, pretty good fight. I'm really starting to enjoy the dungeons here towards the end of Final Fantasy or Realm Reborn. We push through a bunch of mobs and Sid joins us on what I think is Maggie and allows us to walk up to the main entrance of the Castrum only to see the white Power Ranger asshat standing there ready to challenge us. Oh, believe me, I have been waiting for this fight. I'm so ready to throw down with this hussy. That shouldn't be taken any other way. She definitely needs therapy dispensed by my axe. She starts rambling about how he's all mine, and she's talking about guys, of course, and she's all sorts of hot and bothered that we're trying to kill her man. Like, oh, I don't care, lady. This is vengeance for Naraxi. I'm, I'm gonna lay the smack down. It's why did you throw me gloves? To cast these hands! But not gonna lie, though, she actually has some even cooler AoEs paired with different combos and flybys and that take up like the whole arena so it was it was actually pretty good like they she was dealing some good damage it was an amazing fight and and there's cool effects massive aoe's and such but she finally goes down and she reaches up to say daddy gaius please i need the affection gaius Blech. i legit say i should probably go stomp on her just to make sure she's dead you know the the, the good old axe double tap now we move on to the final phase of Operation Archon, the Praetorium, where the Ultima Weapon and guys are all holed up. Also, Nero is somewhere in there, but uh, like, I'm seriously ready. It's time to throw down. Chad informs me that there is nothing but unskippable cutscenes. Great. Oh boy, here we go. We get onto Sid's magic carpet ride and arrive at the Praetorium, literally to just kick the door in and start wrecking everything inside. <laughs> absolutely devastating everyone and everything around me if it moves it's dead that's that's just the mentality that i had we break through a wall and gaius is standing in front of his giant dashboard he turns around with ah sid me boy well now he starts trying to convince sid that garlic bread isn't that bad for your hips sid rejects the love letter and then gaius summons a massive super muscular robot that apparently was wearing a thong that chat reminded me after like, just waiting. He was just, like, right below. He was already on the elevator just waiting. That it doesn't make any bit damn sense to me. Anyway, uh, this fight is pretty straightforward. Kill the giant angry robot. Uh, he does some really cool AoE abilities, and he chunks me pretty damn hard. I'm not gonna lie. Like, he, he hit pretty hard. We get the big boss boy bot down, and then we take the elevator to go down. 
And now we get to drive Maggie literally shooting explosives, lasers, and everything else. Maggie's a bleast, like she's clearing entire groups of enemies in like one to two hits. As we push through most of these mobs, we enter into this one area and it's literally like a horror movie. These giant robot arms just rip out of the walls and start grabbing at us. Like that, that, that surprised the hell out of me. Like what the whole, holy hell, man. But we get to this Sermet door and we have to break down Maggie as she charges her mega laser beam. And then she just straight up dies like what the hell i wasn't ready for this kind of emotional trauma she sacrificed her life for us to break into the wall to deal with the big bad well anyway we approach a giant open room because you know that's going to be a boss fight and called it and nero is here with his red ranger power shoot ready to go to fight us then sid and nero go back and forth for like 15 minutes which is basically a notice me senpai moment of nero living in sid shadow again and again nero feels second rate and honestly the amount of bitching he is doing i can kind of get that it is basically him having to always suffer this injustice he, he's pissed basically and he summons the biggest baddest hammer i have ever seen this is so damn cool Chat reminds me that we will never ever get it. The very first group mechanic I get, I run away because I thought it was an explosion targeted just for me. I was trying to save my group, but apparently I was supposed to stack. This is a simple noob mistake, a noob moment that everyone makes, but I felt pretty dumb, I'm not gonna lie. Well, aside from that, the fight is pretty straightforward. Nero goes down on one knee and the, and the lights turn off, so you know things are about to get spicy. I think we all know where this is going, so let's just skip to the end. And the lights come back on and he's he's gone. He disappeared and Sid's like, damn you, Nero, which he's been saying that with every Darth Vader tribute member here. I promised chat that I would take off my visor, but I did not do it in time. I, I, I actually kind of forgot and I betrayed my entire community. I must remind you that the helmet stays on. Chat loses it and they get, they get so mad at this betrayal and they say it's like the top 10 anime betrayals. <laughs> well, we start sliding down the elevator and it's taking a very, very, very long time to go down. Then Guy slides out of the darkness and gives us a speech about how we are weak and goes straight up Super Saiyan with flashing lights and everything. I make a joke about uh, he's like a shiny Pokemon like who just spawned at us and it only took 8,000 attempts and we should probably call Small Ant. Well, we are ready to take down Belsar and he starts smashing through most of our HP with big beefy boy swings. It, it's actually hitting really damn hard. Guys then fills the entire room with explosions and bombs, all the while summoning copies of himself that slash through the entire platform. Pretty cool fight given the, the area, given the room. I really, really like this. He splits into four and starts charging some kind of energy beam, and we have to kill them all before the blade energy reaches 100%. This was actually a little bit stressful, and of course we get it done before it even really gets to 50, but it still does a ton of damage. I can only imagine how much it would do if it was fully charged. Well, he goes down, and we have some more cutscene. He just, like, literally just walks away. <laughs> nice try, kid. LOL. We run into the next room to see Gaius on the shoulder of the Ultima weapon, and he's basically taunting us because he has the high ground Anakin. And then he loads himself into the Ultima weapon, like some type of Robotech battle cry thing going on here. Now the fight starts, and now the elevator is going up. This is this is really starting to become ridiculous. We start working down this massive beast, but it starts using the elements of the primals. Big AoE slams and everything that Titan had for his abilities to, and that he uses to try to kill us, which is is a, a really interesting way to draw in the fight mechanics from the other big bads that we already had. I like this. Well, he entombs us into a bunch of rocks and then goes into a massive AoE, but then Crystal Mommy whispers to us and saves us somehow. <laughs> then Titan pops out of the Ultima weapon, and then Gaius is like, oh no, well I can't use Earth abilities, but here's some wind. So he summons Garuda, and her abilities are like the Wind Blast and the Eye of the Storm, and it's pretty much just like large aoe damage most things in here are large aoe damage but it's like i'm dodging the aerial blasts as well as staying within the eye of the storm and it's like almost pixel perfect it's like i knew what i was doing then he pops an air shield bubble and starts casting a team wipe and then crystal mommy comes out to save us again which forces garuda out of the weapon and now there's only a freak that's left inside this is seeming more and more like a continuous fight of massive damage, but it's going through phases of the different primals. So that's that's pretty cool. So now we have Ifrit's large AoE fire blasts, which are basically us 
dodging what we can. <laughs> Honestly, this boss starts to feel more and more like raiding, which is pretty damn cool. He starts to charge his massive fire blast, and then Crystal Mommy purges the last primal out of the ultimate weapon, and now we're just fighting the basic bitch at the end. It's, <laughs> it's like, ha, you don't have anything left in you. Well, then our bread boy shows up and he identifies that we can't be beat because the crystal mommy is protecting us with her lunchbox and her raincoat. Mom, I love you. P.O.P. All the day. But then he tells guys that he slipped in an evil crystal within the Ultima weapon and placed there by the Askins to give him power without parallel. Guy starts to question the dude and then Laha Bread is just like, ha, it's time to summon my god, you bitch. Crystal mommy, protect us. Then a big explosion happens. Now we are standing amongst a fiery ring in the entire fortress in shambles. Then comes the most repeated line in the game. Hey, the line, Bart! Such devastation! Yeah! Chat goes absolutely wild with such devastation. Like a hundred people freak out and start typing this all while this is happening. I thought I was supposed to say something. I didn't know what was going on. I panicked. I was like... What line am I not saying? Now the Ultima weapon is at full strength with its evil crystal. It starts shooting off laser beams, large AoE attacks, and it actually feels like it's trying to kill us. Not just a few attacks that we have to dodge here and there. They're stacking combos with other mechanics to nearly one-shot us. So they have one where we all have to stack on top of each other, and as that is landing, he starts casting a forward-facing single target blast, which if it hits us, I'm sure it will kill us. So it's like, there's more that's going into it than what meets the eye. He starts summoning little drones that explode and deal damage and massive AoE bombs, and like, it's, it's really, really a well-done fight. I'm running all over the damn place. He finishes into his Ultima skill, which is basically a guaranteed wipe for us. Now it's a DPS check. Then we start seeing the dissension between Gaius and Lahabred. Gaius is like, what the hell? This isn't what I wanted. I wanted to win the battle, but what it costs. And Lahabred's like, yeah, bitch. Galactic pops a level three limit break, and it was big and flashy, and then the ultimate weapon dies. Gaius gives us one last bit of advice of why we have to do what we do, and we basically have to be strong to rule. Like, dude, I just popped you like a zit. Don't, don't talk to me about ruling. Then the Ultima weapon explodes and the group and I go to clean up Gaius's body because we're basically the janitor of the light. We have to clean up all the crap around the world. And then we have one more fight that sneaks in. Lahabred comes back because his garlic bread order was incorrect. He gives us the pathetic meme. It's time to axe one more baddie and I'm ready to kick this bread boy's ass. He goes on and on about how the balance needs to be restored and he gives us, I can't allow you to leave this place alive. Let's go you little bitch. Visors down. Let's throw hands. The fight starts off with a lot of entire room AoEs. Like there's nowhere to run and you're having to dodge all these abilities appropriately to survive. He hits me with a few abilities that chunk like nearly my whole health bar. But luckily, I have pretty damn good self-healing right now. He tries his best to knock me away and deal substantial damage. He does more massive AoEs and basically dodge this and dodge this while still DPSing down. It feels exactly like a raid boss one. Well, he teleports away and then summons four orbs that we have to kill before he reaches full charge. It is moving so damn fast that there's no way that I can kill him. Like, this is super duper fast. I kill about three of them and then the bar finishes. So he chains me in the middle and gives me the grandest of executions. And then he laughs and disappears into his far corner. On the ground, I'm dead, and then my heart starts beating, and I'm like, oh, uh, what the hell? I already died, didn't I? Chat's laughing at the roller coaster ride because I thought that I wiped it and I failed the mechanics, and, and they're all just like, haha. I didn't know that this was going to be a boss mechanic, but everyone just like laughed at me, like, haha, loser, you died. Oh, uh, you failed the DPS check. Oh, wait. That was, that was all scripted. Well, I get supercharged by Crystal Mommy, and I put a whole axe into the face of the garlic bread asshole. And he starts dying quickly now. I'm hitting large beefy boy hits with my axe and I'm, I'm, I'm ready for this. I finish off the bread boy boss with a tomahawk to the face. Crisp. We get a cutscene of me standing in front of the crystal mama and all charged up by the crystals that, that I've banished already. And I get the cutscene of the very beginning of the Final Fantasy XIV journey, except it comes full circle. We get to see what that crystal and what that scene was actually meant to do. Kind of foreshadowing. Well, Thancred banishes out Laha Bread and we see the Askian for what he really is. A piece of shit. <laughs> I stand in front of the crystal floating because I'm about to smash through this asshat and then our allies for like form light monsters and charge at him like super 
powered light missiles and then we pop the evil one uh, like it, this is too much it's very anime it, it reminded me of the final form cell death by gohan <laughs> Super duper anime. Now we are back to the real world and then Maggie jumps in to save us. We snatch up the passed out Thancred and we run away. We see guys standing in the middle of the inferno, but like how many times does this dude need to be killed before it sticks? Like what the hell? I swear we should have done a, a double tap. We needed to double tap his ass. Well, then the whole place explodes and then he gets vaporized. The crystal mommy tells us that she is going now and the stash did a great job. Yay! The Zion gang is standing outside wondering where we are and they're sad for us because there's lots of explosions. Well, Heidelin gives Menphilia a push in the right direction for us to be running out of the only hole opening on the side of this mountain. Like, everyone's super excited, and then there's tons of memes popping around right now. Just like, <laughs> it frees any frame, and you could really make a meme out of it. Chat reminds me that wouldn't it have been funny if instead of me, it was like some random Imperial soldier trying to run out? Like, oh, I survived, <laughs> and then there's like 50 people ready to kick his ass. Well, we finish up and everyone gives a, a rousing speech about peace and how the Scions and all the good that we did. Everyone's cheering and happy. Thancred is back to himself and he's all happy. Yay, we did it! Gafdag gets a headache of a dark crystal and now we have something else to worry about. Then we hear a screech and now we're informed that some other primal has now awoken. Screams can be heard from all over the place. <laughs> then we get a single cutscene of the new Legion of Doom members plotting their move and, then, and there's like 25 Askins all standing in this one cell. Like, I just killed one of you asshats, damn it. Like, well, they also say Zodiac, which I'm guessing is going to be one of the big bads that we eventually have to deal with. Back outside the Waking Sands, I get a whole firing squad of everyone blasting Kafdad with their Maggie mounts. I also get flying and my own personal Maggie mount. This was a hell of a send-off. What a fantastic end to A Realm Reborn. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So working all the way to this moment has been an absolute blast. Seeing the evolutions of the Scions to fighting the Ultima weapon has just been a joyous ride and one that I will look at with greater impunity here soon. But, on this leg of the journey, I will say that it was a very satisfying ending. Especially going through our hit list of the Darth Vader tribute band, I really enjoyed the complexity of these fights as it was moving through the finale. I especially loved the Ultima weapon after being charged up by the Asian energy. It truly felt like it was a raid fight, tons of mechanics to dodge and move through, also we had to push DPS and popping limit breaks for a DPS check. I like that. I did love that there was a plan immediately after the leaders of the Alliance were basically circling the drain. They kind of gave up like way too easily for my taste, but uh, hey, I'm the stash of the light. I'm here to F shit up and get some garlic bread. I was incredibly thrilled that we were able to save Thancred as I actually did like him as a character, but him falling under the sway of La Ha bread, I was just, that caught me off guard. I was so sure that we were going to have to kill him to set him free, but we were able to save him and finish in an epic manner uh, with him on the back of Maggie. I will say, objectively, I would have liked it to been smoother and less rushed for us to take out the Darth Vader tribute band leading up to it. More spread out, I guess is what I mean. Like, Shield Bro was a walk up and fight, Livia was a quick dungeon, Nero was a side boss. I would have liked to see some more stories, backgrounds to these boss arcs for a little bit more depth. And again, this could have been true for a while ago, because they have made changes to A Realm Reborn. The end of A Realm Reborn was climactic and satisfying, but it also is great to know that there's still tons and tons of content left for me to do before I even get into the next expansion. It is truly wonderful to fight and play with still so much content left to go in the base game. I am continuing my journey through Final Fantasy XIV and I have plans to document my steps leading up to and through Heavensward. Time to move on. I've taken the entire Final Fantasy XIV journey and placed it into a single video which you can see right here. As always, Stay caffeinated, folks.